Hi, I'm Orbert Davis, and welcome to the Chicago Jazz Philharmonic Jazz Cast Series, where we sit down with music legends as well as rising stars to hear their stories. This monthly series is all about sharing experience and knowledge with you. Thanks for tuning in. For more, visit chicagojazzphilharmonic.org. Let's do it. B. Lily is in the house. All What's right, going so give on? a warm welcome to B. Lily. Hey. Let me see it. What's Let up, B. Lily? <laughs> What's going on, over? Yeah, it's good to see you. Good to see you as well. All right. All right, so Lily here we go. We are, yeah, look at, he's, he's seeing, you're, you're remembering uh, some of the people in the Oh, house. yeah, this is family. Before we even get started, let's hear and see a little performance. Arthur's going to cue that up, and we are so psyched to uh, see. This is going to be B. Lilly performing his Sunday sessions right here in Chicago with his band. So Arthur, just let me know, and here we go. I can't even stand yeah. it. I had to hold back to not be letting it out. I always want to sing along with you, Bernard. I appreciate you guys playing. I appreciate the comments too. Yeah, good. I'm Thank glad you. you're seeing the chat. Yeah, appreciate the love. All right, so welcome, B. Lily. Uh, I want people to know that that is an original B. Lily tune, Let It Out. So yes. we'll talk about you writing your own tunes. Absolutely. Um, I think let's start and, and just for our students, please remember you can throw your questions up in the chat and we'll also do some hand raising as well so we can be uh, very interactive here. But Bernard, um, talk to us about, you know, it's very interesting with Bernard because when I first met Bernard actually at a jazz camp a long time ago, he was incredibly quiet. Very and nice. I didn't yeah. even know that he was a singer or a musician or a piano player or anything. And then all of a sudden, one day in the halls of camp, I heard this <laughs> piano playing and singing coming from a room and I peek in and there he is. And I thought, okay, we, we've been spending every day together for the last week. 
I had no idea you played. I had no idea how well you played and sang. And it was just a very interesting moment when I said, what is keeping you from letting it out, so to speak? I, so I see what you did there. Give us a little bit of your history to get started here. A little bit of my history. Okay. Um, so my name is Bernard Lilly Jr. But anytime I'm on stage, I go by B. Lilly. I am from the west side of Chicago, born and raised in the Austin community. Um, I grew up in church. I'm a preacher's kid. My dad's a minister. Um, but I wasn't like the preacher's kid who was super involved. I grew up playing basketball. Um, so I don't know if you guys have ever seen a high school musical. Trevor Bolton was totally teased for singing and all that good stuff. That was my life. I was a Trevor Bolton of my high school. Um, but my senior year, I decided to, um, to kind of flip the script and, and, and began singing. Um, I, I did a musical. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's called West Side Story. And I got the main part uh, as Tony. And uh, from that moment, I pretty much knew that I wanted to be on stage doing whatever. Uh, during that point, the goal was not to be an artist. It was just to present myself and to use my, uh, my gift, you know, uh, and present myself in front of people. And that's pretty much where it started. And uh, six years later, I'm here talking to you guys. So it's okay, been a- Can it's, it's, I just take a minute to picture you in West Side Story? This is new information. <laughs> Wait, and you I, I, I already love you so much and now I can't even believe I love you more. That is a piece <laughs> of new information. And yeah, I love, going. Bernard, that you're even saying, you know, hey, I was a sports guy and I also did music. Because how many of you right now, and just put your hands up to your camera, you know, sometimes those are some competing messages that we have. And sometimes even our parents or the school says, you got to pick. And who says you got to pick? Here's B. Lily saying, you don't necessarily have to pick. How can we do all the things that we love? So Bernard, um, what, you went off to college Bernard is a right. graduate of Lawrence University in Appleton. Yes, Wisconsin. yes. And what did you study in college? So I studied anthropology and ethnic studies. Um, if you know what, what anthropology is, that? is. Tell our students what that even means. Yeah. <laughs> anthropology is the study of people. Um, but there's different types of anthropology, cultural and linguistics. So basically what I socialize, sorry, what I specialize is in is uh, understanding social behavior. Um, so you, you can put me anywhere in the world and I'll be able to figure out uh, what makes a group of people tick and, and, and what's to their morale um, on a macro level and on a micro level. And so how much music were you doing while you were in college? I was doing a lot of music. Um, I was performing almost every weekend. Yeah, I, I, I was performing about every weekend in college. And it's interesting because Lawrence University actually has a conservatory and a music program. Right. And yet, Bernard did, did not major in that. It doesn't mean that he still can't be doing music. So now fast forward to once he graduated and then starts getting the fire again to Absolutely. be writing and playing music. What lit, what reignited your fire? Well, uh, during my senior year of college, I got an email um, from a talent agent um, that represents The Voice. Does anybody like The Voice on NBC? Anybody familiar with The Voice? Yeah, so they reached out um, to me to audition. And I was like, wow, all right, this is a huge opportunity. I didn't think that I would be getting calls like this uh, at this point. But I went on and did it, and it grew me up a lot. And uh, I made it to the top 120 of the 40,000 people who they saw. So I kind of took that as a sign, like, okay, maybe I can really do this in, in the world, you know? Uh, maybe there is a place for me. Um, so that definitely made me come back home and um, work as hard as I can. Unfortunately, I didn't make the show. Um, I got cut literally two weeks before the show, so I got that close. Uh, my friends made the show, though, though, so that was really, really cool. And uh, overall, it was a great experience. Well, and you say, unfortunately, you didn't make the show. And yet. But, right. And yet, you know, um, so, so, sometimes no's are blessings in disguise, for lack of a, a better word. Uh, that no 
I literally got that no the day before my college graduation. Um, so I flew back all the way to Appleton, Wisconsin um, with all of my stuff because I planned to be in L.A., got that no, and I came home back from college with no plan. Um, but all, all I knew is that I wanted to, you know, perform and use my gifts, and that was enough fire for me. <laughs> And so now here you are with this, with this new fire, um, and you've been writing and recording. Yes. Not your first album. This isn't uh, yes, your first yes. album. Is this your yes. first album? Okay. Yes, th 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 this is my first project. Um, so I've been recording, I've been recording uh, an EP for the last year and a half. For those who don't know, a, a, an EP is like a mini album. Um, it's like 30 minutes or less. Um, I've been working on five to six songs that basically um, explain the last six years of my life to give you a, a, a glimpse of me. So I'm I'm really excited to um, to get that going. Well, and and so what is your process? We talked we talked yeah it was yesterday or the day before in one of our classes of not only music but art and writing is write what you know, play what you know, take what's inside yourself and let it out as you do. Absolutely. So Bernard, when you talk about it, it was, the songs are about the last six years of your life. What does that mean for you? Um, it means a, a lot of reflection, um, a lot of allowing things to come to me, uh, and, and a lot of me just recognizing what I have. Um, oftentimes we like compare ourselves and our gifts to other people. Sometimes we feel like, all right, I can't do this because X, Y, Z, without understanding that there's so much there. Um, so those six songs basically represent all that I had in that moment. And, um, you know, I, I feel like they represent where I am in my career and where I am in my life. And I'm excited to get this thing started. Amazing. And how many songs have you already dropped from the EP? So I've only uh, dropped one song, Let It Out, the song that you guys uh, have seen, uh, just listened to. Uh, you can purchase it, stream it on any digital media outlet. So iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon, wherever you listen to music, all you have to do is type Let It Out uh, by B. Lily with two L's, L-I-L-L-Y, and it'll pop up. Um, and I'm looking to release my next single really, really soon. And I may or may not have already heard and know what that single is and oh my gosh it's so good um, <laughs> so so with that bernard you know a, a lot of even even with let it out was a little hard in that video to hear the words um, oh yeah how would you feel about maybe taking the chorus and speaking the words to us right now so they can hear really what how powerful your words are yeah, so so let it out is basically my like testimony song. Is 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 me sharing my story and getting people uh telling you guys a glimpse of of, of what I've lived through. Um, so if you don't mind, I, I kind of want to do each verse and the chorus if that's all right. You get you do you, baby. Okay, cool. I I just I just love the song. So verse one. Lately, I've been running. I've been running for myself, and I got so much I stomach. I try to keep it in, and it's bad for my health. I swear that I know this. That's why I wrote this. I'm just trying to keep my focus. That's my only motive. So this is me acknowledging that, you know, it's just a lot on my mind. And I know this. I, I, I know that I keep it in sometimes, but that's why I'm, I'm writing it. I'm letting it out now. This is me addressing it. Um, the hook is, so I just got to let it out. I got to live it loud today. Um, something that I've grown into doing is just, you know, being unapologetically me and understanding that I am who I am in every space that I'm in. And I feel like it's important for all of us to know that. Um, verse two, lately I've been running. This is like my favorite uh, verse. Lately I've been running with a pain in my chest. My past has been holding me back. Anxiety led to panic attacks, take me back. I was lost, I was broken, it was bad. I was folding, I was hiding in my shell and no one knew it, hocus pocus. I'm just glad that I made it. Not saying I'm the greatest, uh, but I know who it is. I'm just one of his kids, right? So in that in that line, I wasn't necessarily talking about my earthly father, but for me, my spiritual father. I'm a believer. I'm Christian, um, and I know that I don't have it all figured out, but my dad does. 
So he's super dope. I'm one of his, you know, children. So that makes me dope as well. Um, back to the hook. Let it out. Live it loud today. And the last verse is basically my, my, my letter to the world. So one time for my people that's dealing with depression, two times for the people. Um, I, I kind of made a reference to uh, people using uh, substances to kind of numb their experiences. Um, three times for the people, for, for the children that can't seem to learn their lesson. If daddy was around, I wonder if it would be different. Four times for my brothers locked up in penitentiary. I hope you find your way. And when you do, you come and get me. And lastly, for the people listening to this record, I hope you find you're in the peace. Just look at me, a living witness. So just let it out. Mm. Seriously, such powerful words. So I, I want to open it up with some questions because here, here you're talking about what you've been going through. And Absolutely. much of that, some of the messaging in there is even paralleled with some of the Black Life movement that's going on right now, the Black Life Matters movement. So what is it that you hope to do in this world with your music, bottom line? Ooh, that's loaded. Um, <laughs> real quick. Hey, Bernie, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Miss you. Um, what, what do I want to do with my music? Um, I just, I just want to represent life. Uh, I want to represent transparency. I want <laughs> to be a guide uh, for people. Um, I want people to hear my music and feel a part of themselves. I want people to see me perform and see a part of themselves. Um, I want to um, reflect, again, I'm a believer, so I want to reflect God and, and get people to understand that there's a part of him and you as well. Um, and, and that's your power and all you have to do is tap in. Um, I feel like that's the most powerful thing that anyone can do. And that's what I want to do through my music, through the universal language. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Okay. So here you are 24. No. 20, yeah. I'm old y'all. I'm 24 y'all. Right, 24. Okay. <laughs> so think back. Our students are, you know, fifth to 12th grade here. What do you wish you would have known then? Mm. I wish I would have known it just trusted a little more that it's going to be okay. Um, life has its ways of just putting you in situations that you never thought that you would be in. And I spend a lot of my time um, actually up until this point, just focusing on the future and not being as present in the now. Um, being young is obviously like a, a, a state of mind, but to be in fifth grade, to be 17 again um, is, it's, it's such a blessing. So just understand that you guys have time. Uh, the world is definitely in your hands. Like all of the cliches that you don't want to hear, that you think are corny, um, that your teachers say, your, your, the, the principal says, um, you would catch, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Griffin saying, they're true. They're, they're true. And you're going to come back to those so many times. You're going to realize, yo, I should have been listening. So start listening now because it matters. And so with that, Bernard, what have been some of your own biggest personal struggles? Uh, so, so I'm an overthinker. I analyze everything. It's, it's a gift and a curse. Um, sometimes it's a gift. Sometimes it, it drives me crazy. So I kind of find myself stuck um, due to uh, overthinking and not just trusting the process. Another cliche that we hear all the time, uh, trust the process. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that that's a big one for me. Overthinking things. You're hilarious. Yes, that <laughs> overthinking. Okay, so uh, I want to open it up with some questions. Yeah, so let's get to it. Raise your hand, because I, I can see your hands. So raise your hand digitally or here, because Bernard is here. Like, let, let's open this up and, and utilize his uh his um talents and insights bernard i want to know what is your process when 
a song all of a sudden starts and, and how you write your music? Yeah, you know, it's, it's different. Um, one of the things about me is that I'm totally random. A lot of the times um, I'm right here at my piano and, I, and I'm figuring some things out and, and, and the words just come to me. Other times um, I'll be driving and I have to pull over because I heard something. Um, I'm the type to where like I'll be in a room with family and I'll disappear for about 30 minutes because something just popped in and I have to like record a voice, a voice memo. So it, it comes in different ways. Uh, I think I'm just learning to be open to all of the ways in which it comes. Okay, amazing. So, so, yeah. Oh, keep going. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's, that's it. I think um, Dr. Griffin has a question. Yeah, he does. Unmute, Rose. Be Lily in the house. What's up, man? My, my guy, man. It's so good to see you. You as well. You out there being a superstar, man, all over the place. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I can't believe I know you. But um, all right. So so I'm a director. I've been, uh, you know, conducting. Once, uh, at one point in my life, I played music, you know, quite a bit. Um, so now I'm a director. When I'm directing, I'm thinking about the band, thinking about things that's going on. Now, when I watch you perform, not only are you out there pouring out your, your soul and, and, and you're singing all these notes and these riffs, you're actually conducting at the same time your band. Uh, so I would love to know that process because, you know, I, I can't even imagine trying to do all of that at once. Yeah, well, number one, that, that that's a great question. Um, d directing the band is probably like the, the most fun part of the performance to me because every time is different. Um, I'm really big on morale. So luckily I have four amazing band members who just trust me. Um, it does help that I'm also a musician. Uh, my first instrument was a uh, drum. So I can, I got a little pocket in me, you know what I'm saying? So I, I kind of know how to communicate with my drummer. Um, and he knows how to communicate with me. He knows that I'm moving my body. So if I'm doing this, hit that hi hat, you know, um, I, I, I play chords as well. So I can kind of vocally direct my keyboard player into a chord that I really want him to play. You know what I'm saying? Um, so di directing is, is really fun. Um, it, it keeps me on my toes, but I've learned that it kind of builds this morale and this camaraderie um, that's, it's, it's indescribable because you just don't know what, what's gonna happen. It's kind of like jazz, you know? When it's like, all right, we just have to figure out you know, where we are today, figure out the spot and let's ride that wave. So it's really, really fun. But what's amazing is you're doing it, doing it while you're performing, man. It's nuts because I'm watching <laughs> you. I mean, you're actually, you're out here, you're singing to the audience, but yet you're directed at the same time. And so, so kudos to you, man. It's, it's, it's just awesome to uh, watch. Thank you. Thank you, man. Love that. Hey, and Jordan, uh, Jordan Warren wants to know, Bernard, how do you promote your music? That's a great question. Jordan, I think I see you. Is this you with the purple shirt? What's up, my guy? How's it going? You good? Cool. Um, that's a great question, man. Um, so obviously, social media is everything. Have to promote, have to promote. But honestly, the best form of marketing is and will always be word of mouth. There's nothing like someone well, like you hearing good news from someone that you know, right? You're gonna be more inclined to check some something out if, you know, um, your friends tell you as opposed to you just seeing it on your phone. So th those are some ways you can promote your music by uh, performing, you know what I'm saying? Getting it out there, getting it before people and also networking in terms of like the industry or when it comes to anything, it's about more so of who you know as opposed to what you know. So making sure that your things are on the right hands and just making sure that you're putting out good quality. Um, and also knowing that, you know, consistency is much, much, much more important than perfection. Does that's, that make sense? That's huge in everything. Let's say that again. Consistency. <laughs> consistency over perfection. Because it's getting out and doing. Doing, doing, Absolutely. doing, doing. And I'm learning that myself. And and Bernard, with um, with the with the Black Lives Matter, the stuff that's going on today with COVID, with there was a shooting in Chicago, um, again, just a bigger one, um, 
and you being a a black male in the west side of Chicago, how does that affect you and your music? Um, I would say that it first uh, affects my my spirit um, first, and I'm able to express it through my music. So I, I, I can just say it. The, the, the next song that I have coming out is a song called Dear America. And it's a song that is basically my letter to America through the perspective of a black mother uh, who just lost her child. Um, so I say it is definitely a huge part of my music. Uh, I definitely want people to have a good time when they hear my music, but I also want people to to sit and think, um, to reflect. Um, and, and, and I want my music to also um, bring people to, to talk, all, all different types of people. Um, that, that, that's really what our, our world needs the most now. And, and because your piano is in front of you. <laughs> I can give you a snippet of it. Can you hear that? Yep. All right, here's the first verse. The fear in my mother's eyes that I see when she looks at me comes with no surprise. Cause every time she cuts on the TV or read the paper, she sees another black man dead. Thoughts run through her head, knowing that could have been me. That could have been me. I am the one, her only son. But she had February of 96 when the city was run by Jordan and Pill. It was on and popping, it was lit, yeah, yeah. And when my dad laid bricks for a living, we were living in the basement with nothing in the kitchen, just a, a young family trying to make it. Found a hope in the cracks in the pavement, talking about. And this is what she thought. So, dear America, is it as hard as it seems? Dear America, I want my son to live out all his dreams. Dear America, Please have him live his life, yeah. And find out what's inside of him. Dear America, is it as hard as it seems? Dear America, yeah. Won't my son live out all his dreams? Dear America, please have him live his life. Oh, and find out what's inside of him. Can I do the second verse? Uh, Bring it, baby. I wish I could trust you. If only I can trust and believe that you would let this kid give it all he would go through. Rise up and live out the true meaning of this creed. But I can't say that confidently. A black man in the white world's kind of scary. I mean, all I really see the four criminals. Black man gone down. See the upper four. Yeah, yeah. I've been to way too many funerals. I've seen a lot of little kids that I never grow up. And I, and I don't know what to do because the world's so cold and the street's so tough. But, but I be, if I can't make a way, I'd be if this world took my son away, could be a class clown or a scoring touchdowns. Lord, please keep us safe on the day to day. So last time for the people in the back. Dear America, is it as hard as it seems? Dear America, I want my son to live out all his dreams. Dear America, please let him live his life. Oh. Find out what's inside of him. Yeah. Dear America. Uh, it's so yummy. It's Everybody give it up. Oh. There are lots of lots of clapping and digital clapping Thanks, guys. going up. Thanks, guys. That's the first time I like sat and played it in a while. So I'm I'm glad I didn't make a fool of myself. <laughs> no, no. That that's your uh, that's your own inner message that you're <laughs> that was awesome. So here we've got some questions happening. Oh yeah, come on, bring so, them on. Dude. So first of all, um, from my love, what advice do you have for seniors in high school trying to start music as a career? My love, what's going on? Um, that's a great question. Oh, I remember you, what's going on? Yeah. Yo, okay, cool, good to see you. So senior year of high school is when I started. Prior to my senior year, no one knew I could sing at all. So. Um, I would say, so, so do you want to sing? Do you want to rap? Do you like, like, what exactly do you want to do? Um, playing my instrument is kind of my big thing. Yeah. So the, the most important thing, honestly, is to just work on your craft every day, fall in love with your gift and allow yourself to appreciate it. 
Um, something that I'm learning is that, you know, as musicians, as performers, you know, we have a huge responsibility in making sure that people have great experiences. And we often find ourselves giving our gifts to everyone um, but us. So really, really take this time to discover, explore, and understand that you're never, ever going to stop discovering and exploring. Um, that's the start. So as soon as you get that, just don't turn around. Just keep going. Love that. And Thank as a you. horn player, my love, you're a sax player, right? Yes. And as a sax player, um, depending on what kind of music that you're playing, get out there and meet people so they can hire you as a sax player. Absolutely. You use social media um, to just make sure that you're posting content. We live in a content driven world, you know, um, make sure that you're at, at open mics, you know, and it, it doesn't even matter if, you know, at the open mic is usually poetry or singing, you're going to be the only one with that sex and you're going to stand out and everybody's going to remember you, you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, artists, we, we always want to, to meet musicians because you just never know. So just put yourself out there. Thank Love you. It. Yeah, no problem. I'm excited for you. Um, Hariz asks, how good are you at making up lyrics on the fly? That's oh, probably I'm... coming from just watching a little Ella Fitzgerald. <laughs> I am terrible at coming up with lyrics <laughs> 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 on the fly. That, that is not my thing. I, I really wish I could freestyle, you know, if, if, if I could, I probably would never shut up. So yeah, that's, that, that's not one of my things, but I wish I could maybe, <laughs> maybe next year, maybe if I practice for the next year, next year, when I come back, I, I'll do a freestyle for you guys. Well, and I love your honesty, Bernard, cause really it's about knowing what your own gifts are. We each oh, yeah. have our own gifts and strengths and tapping Absolutely. into those. Love it. Absolutely. And LaShawn wants to know, what, if anything, would you have done differently? LaShawn, what's up, man? Um, where where, where are, are you, honey? You? Oh, there she where is. Are you, LaShawn? Oh, Give LaShawn, away, hey. LaShawn. What's hey. going on? I like your, I like your pics. I like your puffs. Thank you. No problem. Um, what would I do differently? Nothing. Nothing <laughs> at all. It's it is what it is, you know, and, and everything that's happened has brought me here, I, you know, in, in this moment, I'm talking to you, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking to you guys. So if I would have changed something, maybe me being here wouldn't be my reality at the moment. So, you know, I, I wouldn't change anything. Wouldn't change anything at all. Love that. Love that. Sure. And, and just to know, you know, Bernard isn't just a performer. He goes into schools and teaches. What do you do with that, Bernard? When yeah. when we were in schools, right? So so when we when we were in schools, I was uh, a life empowerment coach for a uh, college mentoring experience. So I'm basically in schools throughout the week doing life empowerment workshops with a uh, middle and high school kids, just talking about life and really um, just being a guide. As I was saying earlier, mentorship is so 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 important. We all need mentors. Uh, and we all need to mentor as well. So, you know, through that, I've, I've definitely found a, a lot more purpose. It, it definitely keeps me young. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's really fun and I really enjoy it. So that mentorship piece came on yesterday uh, with, with Pinky Ring about finding mentors, finding people that support you. There was a question around how much does your family, how much do your family and friends support you wanting to do music yeah um so luckily i i'm, I'm in a situation where uh, my family is really supportive um and i also want to say this um support comes in many forms it's not just sharing your content it's not just showing up to show sometimes it's you know just just talking uh so someone giving you the space to um get your ideas out um yeah, I, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, but, you know, my, 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 my family has definitely been supportive of me over the years. And, um, and this is because I know Bernard, he also surrounds himself yes. with people who lift him up. Absolutely. So, so that's the other thing. Um, it's important that we're always around people who empower us, right? 
we have the power to control our environments to some degree, to some degree. And the older you get, you get more freedom. I, I know right now you guys are like under 18 and you're living with, you know, your parents, but, you know, th th there's still power in that. You can make your space whatever you want it to be. Um, so I try my best to surround myself with, with mentors, people who are smarter than me, people who have been places that I, that I like to go. Um, and that pretty much keeps me motivated and inspired to just continue to get better every day. So good. Uh, are you on YouTube? And Anissa wants to know if they can find you on YouTube. Yes, you can find me on YouTube. Just type in my name, B. Lily. Um, I actually have some of the first videos I've ever posted up there still. So if you want to see 18 year old me <laughs> with no beard, like 30, 40 pounds lighter, <laughs> watch those videos. Uh, they're good ones. Um, and Elijah, uh, Elijah, why don't you unmute and ask this question? Where are you, honey? What's there up, you? Elijah? Hello. What's up, man? Oh, What's wow. Up? Your voice is so much deeper now. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you, um, bro. Yeah, good to see you, too. Uh, so my question is, um, so I could never really, I don't think I could ever really write lyrics efficiently, but how would you go about writing melodic lines? Um, so so for, for a lot of the lines that I hear, I listen to a lot of music. I listen to a lot of music and I allow that to, to lead me into my own music. Um, and I also just play a lot and, and just explore. Um, what I've learned when it comes to writing Writing isn't as serious as we think it is. You know, sometimes we, we sit down and it's like, oh, I have to write today. And we're like stuck and then we're frustrated at ourselves. Sometimes it's, it's casual. So allow, allow the music to come to you uh, instead of you always coming to it because you are music. You're a musician, bro. You know what I'm saying? You, you've been doing this for a long time. So it's in you. Just allow yourself to let it out. To let it out. And Elijah, I also want to say, how limiting is that thought that you're not good at it? You may just not have been practicing it. Yeah, also like writer's block happens a lot. Same, same, it's, it's all good. We're, we're all figuring it out and your process is gonna change over the years. Um, something that I've been trying to do is, is journal. Um, I just write out what I'm feeling in a moment and uh, go back and try to make a, a poem or a song out of it. Um, but the most important thing to do during your writing process or your just creative process in general, and this is for everybody, is to be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. I cannot stress that enough. Um, you know, at, as an artist, we're, we're very sensitive people. We're very sensitive about our work. Um, and it's, I've, you know, our work definitely gets a lot of critique. But, you know, we have to be able to enjoy it um as well you know what i'm saying because it starts with us love that and and even my love says the creative block is the biggest curse and if we were to reframe that from the curse sometimes the creative block just means that something is percolating yeah to be able to create something to come out so yeah. it goes back to bernard saying give ourselves that grace and cut ourselves some slack of be always producing something. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so the song Dear America that I just wrote, it actually took me three years to write that. I started it in like 2015 and just couldn't get past a line. And I just came back to it and it made me realize that I needed to live a little more um, in order to finish it. So just be patient, yo, just be okay, patient. Okay, I love that from 2015, that's amazing that then you just, uh, sort of let it plan out. And Jordan, thank you. Percolating just means that it might have to just sit for five years. For, uh, Bernard was living. He was having some other experiences. We're thinking about it. We're feeling it. We're kind of letting it sit and work itself out. Thanks, Jordan, for calling me out on that. And Bertie, <laughs> how are you finding inspiration during these times of uncertainty and isolation? Great question, Ms. Bertie. That's that's a great question. Uh, and I feel like that's something that we're all trying to figure out individual, uh, individually. For me, um, the understanding that the whole world has stopped, like that we're literally in this together. Like we're, we're all at summer camp on a computer right now. You know, that, that brings me a lot of comfort. Um, during this time of uncertainty, again, it's just a lot. 
forced me to to listen to myself more um and trust the process more i find um comfort in humanity because he, humans we just seem to always figure it out we've been here a long time you know um and i think that nothing is going to stop because of this this is not the end you know we are just you know a group of people who were chosen to live during this era of time right um and all we have to do is do our part you know and i feel like we're all figuring out what that is it looks different for all of us um but just trust that you know you're on the right path and trust that you know you have something to contribute so me just trying to tell myself that every day um i'm obviously you know really positive today but that's not me saying that i'm positive every day i have my days when it's like all right what what am i doing you know, like, I really don't want to get up today. I really don't want to do any music. I don't want to sing. You know, I, I'm just now getting back to singing and creating. Uh, I took all of June off. I just had to get away from it. So, again, just being kind to yourself and understanding that we're all in this thing together. The whole world. The whole world is shifting. Um, it, you know, we're not alone. So that's, that's kind of has, has been keeping me, you know, afloat during this time. We're in this thing together. Hey, I, could, I hey, couldn't help hey. it. You were just setting it up. All right. So <laughs> in our last two minutes, Bernard and Arthur, I just want to make sure we're ready with our next uh, breakout rooms. Um, what then is, is your, the biggest takeaway that you want them to walk away with today? The biggest takeaway. There are some people on this call, um, on this Zoom, who has this thing in like the pit of their stomach that they wake up thinking about. Do that. There are also people on this call who are searching for that thing, right? Searching for that light. Have no idea what that light is. It's okay. It'll find you, right? It's, it's a lot closer than what you think it is. You just have to, you know, clean your eyes, clean your nose, and, and just see what's there. Because it's there, you know? You, all, all of you guys are here for a reason. They do great work to, to move our world forward. And when we think of what the, the world is becoming, it's really our world, you know what I'm saying? Um, us, Gen Z, right? So I'm, I'm 24, I'm not a millennial though, but we're Gen Z. What the world is becoming is totally up to us. Um, Morgan, you, you're right on the money. Everyone has yeah. a light inside of them. Um, and, you know, I, I, I want you guys to know that, you know, you're going to find it. And if you feel like you found it, you're going to understand that it's more in there than what you thought it was. So just stay encouraged and, um, you know, keep, 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 keep striving and keep striding. Love it. Ah, give it up for B. Lily in the house. Bernard, honey, thank this is you great. so much. You are awesome and amazing. Pop in anytime during camp. Thanks, Just Bernard. For sure. Talk, man. Thank you, Mark. Good to you, man. Orbert, thank you so much. CJP, I, I love you guys. You guys have been family for about five years now. And you know your family. <laughs> Appreciate awesome. It. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you. Bernard. Th thank love you. It. Peace. That concludes this episode of the Chicago Jazz Philharmonic Jazz Cast Series. We really appreciate you tuning in. Sharing these stories wouldn't be possible without the support of listeners like you. To hear previous episodes or to make a donation or to simply learn more about our mission, please visit us at chicagojazzphilharmonic.org. See you next time for the Chicago Jazz Philharmonic Conversation Series.